nisam ja odrasto Gdje ne smiješ reći da si drugači glasno I zašto ovdje od uvijek je bio zastoj Ja ne razumijem to Kako da ovdje nikad nikom ništa nije jasno I sad nam je i gore nego ikada smo Na vrijeme mislili sad ne bi bilo kasno Ja ne razumijem to Nemam para da to sudi ili mi žira Makar budi s tebo brate sa svi strana Trebam pomoć od jarana Vrta neće kreti da ti pusti će me Da se patim skupa struja skupa hrana Kirija od stana Ja ne razumijem to Ja ne razumijem to Perspektiva vam maše iz glavnog grada Bosne i Hercegovine, domaćina najvećeg filmskog festivala u regionu. U okviru njega na programu je i suočavanje s prošlošću, projekat u očima mladih. E baš ti mladi koji učestvuju u tom projektu su i naši današnji sagovornici i sagovornice. Zato savjetujemo da ih čujete vrlo pažljivo. Sarajevo Film Festival i fondacija Friedrich Ebert okupili su 30 mladih ljudi iz sedam zemalja regiona. Ovde su između ostalog da razgovaraju o suočavanju s prošlošću, a to čine kroz razgovore o filmovima, kroz radionice i kroz posete mestima važnim za kulturu sećanja. Mi im želimo dobrodošlicu u Sarajevo, a i u emisiju Perspektiva. Mislim da je Dealing with the Past prilika za nas da pričamo o nekim događajima, mislim, dosta realnije i konkretnije u odnosu na priliku koja bi bila u našoj zemlji, zato što možemo da čujemo priče naših vršnjaka i možda iskustva njihovih roditelja tokom događaja iz prošlosti. I smatram da među nama ne postoje neki jaz koji ljudi možda očekuje. Mislim da vi mnogo drugačije gledamo na stvari koje su se desne, zato što nismo bili sami učesnici. Mislim da možemo da budemo svesni emocije koje su ljudi koje volimo ili koje znamo prošli, ali mislim da je isto prilika da u okviru ovog programa u stvari primjerujemo mehanizme koje će dovesti od toga da se uspostavio neki konkretan odnos među nama i da se događa iz prošlosti ne ponavljeno na takav način nikako. Mislim da je ovaj program jedna jako super stvar, pogotovo zato što uključuje ljude iz čitavog regiona, znači iz drugih zemalja, iz Balkana, nije samo BiH ili samo Hrvatska, te isto tako dolazi više mišljenja, više istina, više prilika da vidimo puno više različitih strana, puno više priča, bilo to personalne priče ili generalne. Moram da priznam da dosta stvari sam novih saznala kada sam došla ovde o ratovima i o nekim dešavanjima van onoga što smo mi radili uglavnom u školama. Pa saznala sam za neke događaje u Sarajevu, to jest u Bosni i Hercegovini. O tome mi nismo diskutovali u srednjoj osnovnoj školi. Mislim da nisam imala toliko često priliku da se susretnem sa tom temom uopšte rata 90-ih u školi, jer nekako smo tu uvek nekako otarili, bio je kraj školske godine i nekako više to više nije ni bilo ni bitno i prosto mislim da nismo nekako dovoljno razgovarali o tome jer prosto je prosto i različiti stavavi i prosto mislim da postoji neki određeni strah među profesorima da potegnu tako neku temu zato što nisu ni oni sigurni oko svojih stavova i možda ne žele da ih dele sa učenicima i sl. Ali mislim da ono što nekako meni bilo uvek interesantno, ono što meni nekako uvek interesalo jeste bila istorija, politika i sve, tako da sam nekako uz razgovor sa roditeljima se još više zainteresovala za tu temu tako da sam veoma rada onako čitala neke knjige, gledala na internetu, gledala sam neke stare snimke sa televizija i drago mi je što ono, za razliku od danih starih generacija, sad ja pričam kao da imam 355 godina, a imam samo 19, mislim da mi je super poslužilo to što postoje neki stari videosnimci 
na YouTube i tako dalje. Prosto iskoristila sam taj moment, neki kvalitetan moment medija i uopšte interneta, što bi rekli stariji, ja ne znam zašto vi koristite društvene mreže, vama to ništa ne valja, vi samo da koristite da što da istražite taj internet, ali zapravo da, eto, iskoristila sam za to da neke možda prave stvari i onda mogla sam da kreiram neki svoj stav i prosto da znam šta, kako, gde, zašto. Prije ovog samog projekta, o svim tim dešavanjima, nije sam mnogo znala, ono, u porodici preča, eto, bio je rat i mogli smo od plate jedva da kupimo hleb i vareniku. U školama se kod nas o tome uopšte ne govori, uđbenici su ispunjeni svega sa par polupraznih strana na tu temu, do kojih zapravo i nikad ne dođemo, jer naša istorija sa uđbenicima završava sa drugim svjetskim ratom. Posle toga ne priča se ništa. Mimo toga, jedino ponešto što sam uspjela sad znam jeste iz filmova. Trenutno situacija u Crnoj Gori je jako komplikovana. Nakon 30 godina odjednom smo odlučili promijenimo vlast, pa je krenulo na gore. Sad još gore je nakon promjene opet vlade i šta će sad biti, da li će opet da pane vlade, da li će se raspisati izbori, ništa se ne zna. Mislim da naši politički vođe koliko god pokušavaju graditi toleranciju i mir u našem regionu, isto tako nisu još izgradili toleranciju i mir unutar samih sebe. Posebice u Hrvatskoj je situacija takva da imamo premijera i predsjednika koji se na dnevnoj bazi međusobno vrijeđaju po medijima i oni nisu ni sami sa sobom izgradili toleranciju i mir i kako onda ako se dvije glavne osobe, dva lidera naše države ne mogu usuglasiti međusobno, kako ćemo se mi usuglasiti sa svim našim susjedima i sa našom cijelom okolicom. 1995. godine, pred kraj četvrogodišnje opsade Sarajeva, Obala Art Center pokreće Sarajevo Film Festival. Danas, 28 godina kasnije, tretiranje ratne prošlosti na svaki način, pa i kroz filmsku umetnost, nažalost, i dalje je nužnost naših prostora. A šta o toj prošlosti i o životu sa ratnim posledicama misle mlade generacije rođene u miru? E to smo ih pitali, između ostalog, u perspektivi. I think that it's quite important to reconciliate, not just important, I think it should be mandatory, especially for our generation. And I suppose that it is kind of in our hands to do that and to deal with the past and make a better future for our region. Well, things can be quite calm and quite uh, triggering at some times because um, there were some shootings at the border at the past few days. But I think that we uh, have uh, support from internationals and the things can be quite uh, peaceful if needed. I think that peace is one of the key words in Bosnia and Herzegovina currently, because for so long time, so time our generations have been affected by some previous generations of trauma from generation to generation. And now I think that it is on our hands that we actually promijenimo, to je da napravimo tu kooperaciju i mir. S druge strane, nekada ne mislim da se ja lično osjećam obvezano da gradim mir i sa kim, jer ja se sa nikim nisam ljutio ili svađao, ali opet, s druge strane, postoji tako neka generacijska, što sam već rekao, historija koju mi trebamo da mijenjamo trenutno sada. Jer to je jedno sve što možemo da uradimo, jer koliko mi koji to negirali, mi kroz to prolazimo. Reconciliation is really important for us, especially for the young people, because I believe that we are the future and we are the only ones who can fix this program, because as we know, whoever comes from the Balkans, we've all dealt with conflicts, wars, and it's a, it has affected us and in some ways, even though we weren't a part of it, but we can see that it still has uh, done some things to us and we are the ones who can fix it, even though It's not a must, must, but like, of course, uh, it's really important for us to work towards the future and to deal with the past who, who our ancestors left to us. I'm Albanian, so I assume you all know between Macedonians and Albanians the conflicts. For instance, uh, just several weeks ago, there was a protest against the Bulgarians, but the Macedonians uh, got in Skopje and attacked Albanians out of nowhere. So the situation is... Uh, most of the time good, but whenever there's a situation which affects the Macedonians and stuff, they start blaming the Albanians and they start blaming us. So 
it can escalate really quickly, but overall we are peaceful between each other. Uh, war is talking about a lot in Kosovo because uh, it's still open wounds and it's still a lot of trauma left. Uh, people lo have lost a lot during the war, uh, but also the war uh, that happened in 1999, it's still... Uh, it still creates ongoing conflict, especially in the zone where I live. Uh, so it's talked a lot about, and it's still, I feel like, not a lot of hate, but it's still hate because of the ongoing conflicts that were created by the past. Uh, war is uh, talked like a such traumatic experience, even though it was for a short time, not like in Bosnia, but it still crea uh, created a lot of victims and a lot of uh, damages done, economical, uh, emotional, spiritual, in every way. In, in Albania, for example, right now, technically, when I when I was thinking, on the, right now in this moment, we don't have any kind of, let's say, um, uh, conflict between ethnic communities. If we take in the first meaning of uh, uh, of uh, of reconciliation, but technically the only kind of problem with us it, it's come it's come is is about the position that Albania is keeping when it comes in the regional cooperation and when it comes to Kosovo and Serbia. And in Albania, day by day, and uh, based on the internal development politics that are happening these last days, I'm, I'm seeing and I'm realizing how that there is a raising, is, is raising this kind of stereotypes and hates when it comes why Albania is strengthening, uh, no, how it looks like that is strengthening the bilateral relation uh, with Serbia. And this came as a result of Open Balkan. So, and this is also by the, uh, you know, by our, uh, by the, by the mayor of um, of Democratic Party that he is backing right now in the politics after a long time. And so, this is, I guess, that we have some new developments when when it comes to, um, to I, I guess, to uh, stereotypes, opinions, comments, and the opinion of uh, and to the public opinion on this regard. Nedavno je širom sveta obeležen Međunarodni dan mladih. Mladi kod nas, odraslima, izgleda, izgledaju nevidljivo. I zbog toga, nažalo, sve češće za svoje buduće adrese ne biraju lokalne, nego neke adrese u inostranstvu gde će moći da ostvare svoje prave i potencijale. Zato pogledajmo priču jedan u očima mladih. I, I don't live in fear and I'm not uh, scared to normally live my life as everyone else. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of media propaganda when it comes to North Mitrovica. Uh, of course, there are small conflicts, of course, um, but I, I don't live in fear. Generally, I don't live in fear. Uh, I feel like some things are created, in my opinion, as I see it, uh, some things are created by the government, especially Serbian governments, uh, to uh, just not keep peace in a way. Because I feel like if Serbian government wasn't involved in some situation, we would live perfectly happily. About the war, well, Albania is pretty much has always been in this isolated position in the Balkans. We don't speak the language that the rest of the Balkan does. We're like, you know, that black sheep in the family who doesn't really know what it's doing. So war in Albania is not talked about because it's not our reality. It has been in the long past, but it kind of has gotten away from people's collective memories. Like, yeah, we have Kosovo and we have Bosnia, but people don't really talk about it because war is not a pleasant topic to talk about. And you don't know in what layers you should tackle it. Like, it's not, you're, you're taught in history in a very distant way. It's not like, hey, this happened to your brothers. Hey, this happened, like, before. It's just like, hey, hey, this happened and these are the numbers of the victims and you were like that spectator and sometimes you had to suffer through it. But you know what? Everyone has gone through wars and everyone does that. So it's not something that is treated with humanity and with uh, delicateness and it's not talked about. Even war in Ukraine was like, it happened, people were aware of it, there were some protests in Tirana because people were against it. But then after this peaceful demonstration, there was silence. So if there is one word that I would describe 
the way that war is perceived in Tirana, in Albania, but I think also in the Balkans is silence. People refuse to talk about it, people don't want to talk about it. People are tired of talking or are tired of thinking and living the realities of post-war countries. I think that the war um, is very hard to move on from, especially in Kosovo, we're still freshly out of the war but it makes our everyday life it um, really impacts our the way the the politics works and it really impacts our families it's hard to talk from a perspective that you haven't lived the, through war but for the people that have been there uh, they can feel the tension every time that the smallest thing happens um, i don't live in fear either but my family does and i think that it's quite important that we don't just get um, rid of that and say, oh, it happened, let's just um, move on and forgive and forget, because it doesn't work that way, and without actually talking about it and letting everyone know what happened and why the things are the way that they are. Uh, is quite important to create a better future, or at least a decent future for our countries. It's impossible to have a talk uh, about the past and not resolve trauma, especially especially in Kosovo. Uh, we talk about war in schools like every day. Um, history, our history books have covered m pretty much everything about the war, but not as much for Bosnia as they do from for Kosovo. But we still learn about Bosnian war. Um, here, we no one really talked about the Kosovo war, even though it was shorter and of course it was less damaged and less traumatic, but still no, not a word for Kosovo war and I think that's pretty shameful because we are living the same things. And even in Albania and even in the, in the places that war didn't happen, I think that it's very, very important to share those stories and to talk about the things that happened because they are the things that build us and the things that keep us uh, going and will make us work for for reconciliation. Ja se bazirat na svoj grad Banoviće, gdje je dosta izbjeglica iz Podrinja, Zvornik, odatle moja majka, također dosta ljudi iz Srebrenice, pa dosta priča o tome o toj temi, pogotovo u školama, iako je tek ove godine do, 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 dodatak o ratu u Bosni i Hercegovini, gdje će tek sad učiti o tome, to znam je majka predaje historiju, to mi je žao samo što ta dodatak nije prije dodan, to trebalo se odmah učiti o tome. Za mene lično jedan od najvećih strahova trenutno a jest što se nedavno bilo a, pitanje oko izbornog zakona i dosta se pričalo o tome u Bosni i Hercegovini. Jedan od, a, permanent, a, jedan, od, jedan od važnih hrvatskih političara u Mostaru je rekao Biće problema na jugu ako se ne usvoje odluku oko izbornog zakona. Uglavnom, to je nekako vidi među i mojim roteljima i među ljudima oko mene da to nekako opet uljeva strah od rata. Mislim, to jeste, nije javno pozivanje na rat, ali jeste prijetnja korištenjem tog, tog sistema. A, s druge strane, također vam je strada da Bosna i Hercegovina ostane samo u ovom nekoj pad poziciji koju sretno nalazimo i za nekih 50 godina da mi samo ostanemo država koja nije još razriješila naše interne probleme i koji nas toliko spričavaju od bilo, kakvog, kak, bilo kakve vrste napretka u budućnosti, jer mi ne možemo dogovoriti da nam voz prelazi preko etničke linije ili tramvaj, a kamo li nešto drugo. Najviše mi je strana konflikta realno, da se ne ponovi ono što se desilo prije 30 godina, jer to je konstantno to huškanje rata, već sad će izbori isto, i će ista priča koja se vrti već 30 godina unazad, nacionalizam, ratni zločini. I mislim kad bi se desio još jedan rat, ovdje to bi bio potpuni kraj Bosne, jer nisu oporavili od prošlog rata, kamo li jedno bi se desi. Pa išao bi rat. Kad me rotelji pustili, ja znam da bi oni odmah otišli odavde, pobjegli bi. Eto, ja branio. I live in Kumanovo, which is a multi-ethnic city and really diverse one, containing Turks, Roma people, Macedonians, Albanians, but unfortunately is the most segregated one. So what I fear the most is that we will never achieve to desegregate the city and all uh, live together in peace. Like while we walk in the city, it's like really ironically because you have the Albanian part, you have the Macedonian part and like how can you divide that city when everyone is living together and I think that we should really aim and strive for the peace and for all to live together to bring the schools, the institutions and everything together. Now what would I do if a war started again? I honestly have never thought about it but most probably will fight against it and will 
um, start advocating and everything. Will I be in the same city, in the same country? I really don't know about that one. Da se ponovo desira, teško mi jako odgovoriti. Ovaj, prije sam mislila samo bi otišao, jer ne znam isto gledam šta ova zemlja ikom daje. Ne samo me, ne gledam to sebično, nego osjećam se i mislim da se većina ljudi osjeća <coughs> kao da smo svi prevareni. Ne dolazim iz nacionalističke sredine i ne znam, ali um, borio bi se protiv rata, <coughs> ne znam na koji način mogu, ali... Ne bih htio da samo ostane sve na mirovnim protestima. Protiv nasilja se nekad morate boriti nasiljem. I potrebno je preispitati pored za koji je uveden to 90-ih. Protiv toga nacionalizma nastojao bi naći ljude koji su jednako vatrini protiv toga. I da, da, da sabotiramo taj rat maksimalno. Ovaj, ali to bi trebalo biti djelovanje na internacionalnoj razini. Ne, ne samo na razini Hrvatske jer tako ne možemo ništa. Tipa, sad kad mi kažete, evo Lorenz, Marko Mahir, da ja nekog tako ubijam, zašto? Imamo iste snove, imamo iste želje. Sretni smo zbog istih stvari, zbog istih stvari smo tužni, slični. Različiti su ljudi. I da ja idem na tako nekog, jer je neko rekao za nešto i ovo za ono, da se grade vile i ovo i ono. I would like to add that being a woman in a war is not easy. So if war happened to have like to happen uh, to be honest I don't know what I would do but I would not like to stay because we've all seen how our bodies are used against us and how being a civilian in a war either means rape either means death either means living in terrible conditions and I don't think that I have that much heroic and patriotic love for my country to deny myself and to deny my existence. I show my love in my country by actively working in, in, in civic society and hoping to better things, but frankly I'm tired of, of having wars and I'm tired of putting my life in line for something that I did not even start just to protect this ideal that people have, this place of belonging that is supposed to be ours, that is supposed to be in peace because people have started this war because they are greedy, because they want more, because they have these twisted ideals that they, they want to protect. I, I want to protect myself, I want to protect my family, I want to protect my loved ones. This is what I'm here for. I'm not here to take part in this male game, which is essentially what war is, and I'm not here to have my body used against me just because I was born a woman, just because I happen to live in a country that is sieged. I don't want to die in a war because I don't want to die in terrible conditions. I don't want to be executed for just being there, you know? And I don't think anyone deserves to die there because too many people have already died because of that. Uh, the most important lesson that I've gotten out of every peace training and living in North Mitrovica is that, is that from Kosovo, from my, for my history, my perspective, not all serves all the same. The acknowledgement of that, that they're not all the enemy, they are not, uh, they do not hate you for being Albanian, you don't have to hate someone for being a Serbian. I think that's the most important thing uh, to, to teach people and to tell people because that's how you can achieve peace. That's how you can achieve peace. Do not blame someone for, some, for uh, what someone else did. Maybe like my, my ancestor did bad to someone else, I am not to blame for it. And neither should we blame everyone just because of the ethnicity, nationality, race, gender, anything else. That's how you uh, take all the hate away, in my opinion. Not generalizing everyone. Jedan od velikih problema Mosara generalno je se što grad jeste poznat po svojoj etničkoj podijeljenosti i bla bla bla, dvije, dvije stane grada. Ali jedna od stvari koju ja mislim da je... Uh, Sličan sa Sjevernom Mitrovicom je zašto kod nas u Mostaru imamo veliki broj nacionalnih spomenika koji se upravo zbog tog etničkog konflikta koji traje i nakon rata u institucijama, a, to je sve toliko zapušteno da imamo a, neke ogromne spomenike poput partizanskog roblja koje svake godine bude vandalizovano. I iskreno to jeste prikaz pravog fašizma kada uđemo na partizanskog roblja i vidimo njemačke svastike i ustaška u po cijelom groblju ispisana polomljene ploče i tako dalje. I mislim da ljudi zapravo žive u strahu kada se svako jutro probudi i samo čuju za novi mural, novo... Nove stvari koje su dešavane zbog tih etničkih tenzija upravo. 
ali mislim također i da dosta infrastrukture grada nije dovoljno dograđeno nakon rata, zato jer imali smo zastoj u gradu punih 15, manje od 15 godina, ali nismo imali gradonačelnika, niti parlament koji, parlament gradsko vijeće koje mogu da uradi bilo kakve odluke u Mostaru. Mi tu svi imamo slične probleme, kao što čujemo. Ali to je uspun fašizma. Ja bih rekao da u Hrvatskoj sad možete vidjeti više fašista nego što ih je bilo u drugom svjetskom ratu. Ili ljudi skloni sklonih takvim ideologijama. Uz to ljudi žive jako loše. Ja vidim da ljudi to precipiraju u Hrvatsku kao nekakvu bolju zemlju, ali to stvarno nije. Ja sam privilegiran, vjerujem, u odnosu na sve kolege tu, ali dalje je to. Vidite Audi, vidite BMW na ulicama, a vidite ljude kako kopaju po smeću i spavaju po ulicama. Mislim da kapitalizam proždire cijeli svijet, ali tako i moju zemlju. I, na primjer, klimatske promjene... Iako su evidentne u Zagrebu sada, možete vidjeti kako je puno više vruće, kako više nema snijega, a sve to ide ruku pod ruku. Tako da, mislim, naravno, isto mladi odlaze, ali u sve to, da zaokružim, najveći problem je apatija, jer postoje ljudi koji gledaju kako se sve to događa i ne vjeruju da išto može biti bolje. Ili kažu ono isprazno što svi to volimo reći, bit će bolje, ali ne znamo nikako ni šta. Tako da, fašizam, korupcija, naravno, ekonomija, kapitalizam kao temelj toga, jer sve ide, nacionalizam, fašizam, sve mu ide pod ruku i klimatske promjene, koje isto ekonomija za profit održava i sve spaljuje. Mislim, šta da kažem, evo, kikiša više nigdje u svijetu nije pitka, šta da pričam dalje, a sve to dolazi još više, još jače i još gore. Perspektiva, perspektiva. Nakon odgledanog videa Priča 1, u sljedećoj epizodi Perspektive pogledajte šta naša prva grupa misli o onome što je upravo čula. A vi do tada pročešljite našu web platformu perspektiva.plus i vidimo se za sedam dana također u Sarajevu. Nisam ja odrasto, gdje ne smiješ reći da si drugači glasno I zašto ovdje od uvijek je bio zastoj, ja ne razumijem to Ništa nije jasno I sad nam je i gore nego ikada smo